All right, and in today's video, we're going to extract the chains off the seven pin side of the GSX pin setter. Uh, the two chains we're going to take off are going to be the, uh, the sweep motor drive chain right here in this section. We got the sweep motor, and then at the back here, we're going to take off as well. Since we got the, we're going to take it off, we're going to remove the table uh, table drive chain off of the big gear, and we're going to clean the gear as well. First step I gotta do is I gotta lower the table all the way down to the deck. I have it in diagnostic right now. I'm gonna run it and lower it, and then I'm gonna release the tension off of the sweep as well. Alright, so I've got the table below, the deck below, the setting table, has, is all the way on the deck on the bottom. I'm also going to go over to the table motor, and I'm going to push any tension I can off that brake just to make sure it's fully bottomed out. I'm using just a little bit of force. I don't want to stretch out my springs on my table motor. And you can go ahead and just take the belt off and it should be right down almost completely bottomed out, which it was. It didn't even spin. Alright, now I've got the sweep motor over here. I want to, it's dropped my sweep in front. I want to go ahead and take that belt off, but you just got to watch because whenever you take the belt off, the sweep is going to run and roll forward. So that's why you'd uh, get the table all the way down. I'm going to take the belt off and I'm going to ease it forward with my hand. It's not going to hit fast, but I just don't want it to hit my equipment. I don't like having to fix anything for any reason because of something I did. So I'm taking this belt off, working around the black pulley, and I'm slowly letting it come forward. About two more inches, and it's going to hit, all right, there, it's bottomed out, and it is against the table. Just so you can see what happened down below whenever I released the belt, the sweep arm rolled forward and pressed against the actual setting table. Alright, I already used the Allen wrench on the top to uh, take my guard lock-in screws and release them. Yeah, you can see uh, a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my lower pin light. All right, so as you can see here, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, see I need a lot of cleaning around that big wheel there from when they originally lubed it. This is the first time we've gone through. Sweep change not so bad, but since I am pulling one off, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take care of everything at the same time. Uh, I don't usually do much with the attenuator arm or the sweep release chain there. Uh, it just doesn't rotate around. So it's kind of just like a, a straight length of chain that just raises and lowers. It doesn't have a lot of work that it does in my opinion. So I try and limit the, the actual effort I put into taking apart each machine every time because I'm sure as you know as mechanics uh, you don't have much time for doing what is really important. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, extract the chains, as I've showed in previous videos, uh, how to take out the master link. Hopefully you know basically now what I'm doing in these sections. I'm going to find the master link first. Oh, brother. This is going to be good. chain is so dirty it was hard to locate that master link. There we go. Just got to pop the clip off. The top cover clip. I'm removing it first. Okay. 
soon as I tell my bee mechanics, if you have something that is really greasy, use a paper towel. Get the grease off of it because you can actually throw that away before you use a rag and ruin a rag because uh, it's not good to wash and dry any petroleum products in the washer and dryer. It doesn't totally get them out and it runs a risk of fire. Also, uh, I'm going to try and take this plate off. Sometimes you can't get the plate off. Take your needle nose pliers. Use both pins to push through where the pegs come through and lock your master link. I'm going to go ahead and take off the sweep release drive chain. Come on. So basically, I took my, uh, <coughs> my two, <coughs> excuse me took my two needle nose and just pressed them right through the hole there and it pushed the pins out. Alright, second chain off. So we got my chains off. chains out of the way. It's a lot easier to clean this wheel. Uh, you can wipe a lot of it off probably first. Yeah. And uh, come back. See how bad that is. We'll come back and spritz it with some WD-40. I do the same on the small wheel over here. It's not as bad, but WD-40 knocks out that uh, chain lube really quick, cleans it up real fast. Just like when you're cleaning a bearing out, use a little WD-40. I'm going to put some on my rag and I'm going to try and wipe around the back side. gear wheels are clean, I got the chains off that I'm going to clean, and I got to take these chains in and dump them in the soak bath. Alright, this is our part soaking bin. It's only a three gallon part soaking bin. I'm just going to show you that one main drive chain. Show you just how dirty it was. I don't know if you can see it in the light, but I did bring a rag. I'm going to just wipe it once. And all that just came off the cover. So we just put them into the bath. Careful not to splash anything in your eyes. Uh, we do use a water-based, uh, like, simple green heavy-duty cleaner. And just let it sit there and soak for a while. Maybe while you're wiping down some more parts on the machine. I'll clean this up and uh, come back and reinstall. They soaked a while. I just want to show my new beam mechanics come in for training what we do. Uh, just take the chain and uh, make sure you have these good gloves, a lot thicker gloves on than the regular nitrile. I just go through and with a bit of it in the water, scrub it. Uh, watch your jet. Don't let it splash back on you. We do use the uh, heavy duty pro degreaser. It's a purple from 
simple green, water-based. Uh, but it does say that it has uh, cancer agents in it, so you don't want to splash it in your eyes and face. But nevertheless, scrub down both sides of the chain. You know, we hit the middle links, and then I put it over here in the wa in the actual cleaning solution under the water, under the jet, so it won't splash back in your face. And I'll clean it out. It's still dirty. I got a lot more cleaning to do, but I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me uh, give this chain a bath. All right, I wanted to show you. Uh, now that I'm done cleaning the chain with the, uh, we use the Simple Green HD Purple Water-Based Heavy Duty Cleaner Degreaser. Now that I'm done cleaning it, we go ahead and we take it and we blow it out. Uh, it's about 95% cleaner than what it was. We do this to all of our chains. Uh, once we once we clean them, we do blow them out. Try to get as much of that cleaner out of the inside, because uh, as soon as you relubricate them, if any leftovers or excess residue, will start to affect how the lubricant itself works. And since our cleaner is water-based, we don't want it to sit up in there and cr make the chain start to rust. You see, I still got some excess up in there off this rag. I will come back and lubricate the chains. I'm going to wait till I'm about ready to install them. These chains I'll go ahead and spray lubricate outside of the pin setter. I'm going to use this uh, spray on Molly Chain Lubricant LU202. It's the same, it's exactly the same thing that uh, Brunswick supplied us from before from Bowling Supply for lubricating the chains. But this is just direct from, I believe I got it from Global Industrial. Got about a 12 case of it. It's just the newer upgraded model can. That's why it doesn't look. It's, the old cans were uh, had a brown wrapper and some links of chain going across it. But this is the same thing made by the same company, Molly Chain Lubricant. Alright, so I've already lubricated the clean chains with the LU202 from uh, Spray-On. Just so know, everyone knows the product I use. Couldn't remember if I said it earlier, the right numbers at least. Alright. Beat the chain in. Alright, this chain in particular, I like to put it at the top. You go along the walls here. It's hard to get that pin, the master link in from the back. My lap master links and all the clips are cleaned as well. I'm going to bring it around the top. All right. Uh, to let you know, normally it doesn't just drop in like that, but I can tell that my chains are kind of loose, so I've got to adjust those gear drives to the table motor, possibly the sweep motor. Create a shadow. I'll go ahead and push the pin in from the top. Both pegs are in. Cover plate. Another piece of advice: don't don't put your master link in a spot where it's hard to get back out again for future reference or for future extraction. Sorry. All right, now we're going to do the front one with the sweep here. Same thing, you want to put it somewhere up top. 
Makes it easier to drop that master link pin in. This one as well. Let's see if you're in the good spot to see it. Let's bring you over here. This one as well, just lined up quite simply, wrapped around there. Uh, if you get it and your chains are the right tension, usually you end up about missing a link or something when you're trying to put it on. All you got to do is take your sweep arm and push it forward. You, with your hand to, to take the uh, you'll align the gear the big the bigger gear better and it'll drop your chain into the spot it's supposed to be in and it'll close that link up and it'll wrap around and it'll go right together it's hard for me to show it to you because this one just fell into place which unfortunately tells me that my chains are loose and I've got to do some tension on them Coming in from the back side with the master link. Try to stay out of the camera. It's hard to do this without actually having to get in there and do the work. Cover plate and now the, the tension clip. I know there's shadows. I know you weren't in, probably in a close-up position to see it, but you should, as I said earlier in this video, you should know how to do the master links from earlier videos that I generated. I'm going to pull you up and I'm going to show you the tension here on these chains. I have to get a flashlight out for this. There we go. Ugh. Let's not get you too close. All right. So as you can see, I got the chain here on the big drive. Uh, <laughs> that is not right. That is way too much play. There's supposed to be about a quarter inch of play either way that you would push it down. So I can tell I have got to adjust these today. It's a good time to do it. It'll be out and open. I'd have to go ahead and pop off, or not pop off, but just loosen. Let me see if I can get a little dimmer light here. There you go. Loosen these bolts at the top there's a uh, lock nut on the inside I believe it's 17 millimeter it's been a while since I've put, taken them off and then down here at the bottom you can see one in the center of that light image and there should be its redheaded stepbrother right there get you over the top that one alright so I loosen those four and then on the inside there's a tensioner bolt I'm going to take you up there and show it to you all right, so this is up on the inside. Right over here is the table motor. I'm going to show you back here underneath this slip clutch. If I can find a way to get you in there. Lucky you can fit. There it is. That's your tensioner bolt. That should also be a 17 millimeter, I believe. So what you do is you just break the four bolts earlier that I showed you. Just break them free to give it enough room to slide. If you make it really loose, and you set your tension and you tighten those back up, the chain will be way tighter than you need to. But, if I can get you over the top here, it's so hard to see in this position. There is a lock nut on that, so you'd want to get that tension bolt out to where you need it to be to, to, for the proper tension, and then uh, to the upper right-hand corner of your screen, underneath the slip clutch, that's the slip clutch, there is a lock nut. You'd want to lock it down into that position. So I'm going to work on doing that next. And that is the cleaning of the chains.